Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. In this video, we're going to look at Live's freeze command. It can greatly help you manage the CPU load incurred by devices and clip settings, but it also has some creative and time-saving features. In this video, we will look at the uses and applications of this function. So the freeze function is available when you right click on a clip or on a track, either in the session view or in the arrangement view. It is available on both audio and instrument tracks, and when you freeze a track, all audio effects, MIDI effects, and instruments become frozen and further editing is not possible in both the arrange and session views. So if I was to freeze this clip here, you can see that the devices have turned to light blue, meaning that no more editing is possible. And if I go back to my session view and look at the clip, you can see it's also a light blue, meaning that it's not possible to edit and anything that's highlighted in blue is now frozen and it's not possible to edit it. So all my MIDI clip parameters and any loop parameters are also frozen. In this session, I don't have any audio clips, but if I was to add an audio sample to a track and then freeze that track, you'll notice now the warping function is also frozen and it's not possible to do any clip automation. Doing this frees up CPU processing that these devices were using, allowing you to create more advanced sound design and complicated mixing using more devices. If you want to edit any of the devices that are on these tracks, all you simply have to do is unfreeze that track and their functionality becomes available again. Usefully though, when a track is frozen, it's volume control, mute or activation, solo, pan, sends and its routing are still available. Also any track automation you had in the arrangement view is still available for editing. When a clip is frozen in the session view, it's still possible to duplicate and make copies of that. And the copies will also be frozen, but you can still continue on with your arrangement. So let's go through the uses of the freeze function. Top of the list, as already mentioned, is to save CPU power. So when you're producing your tracks, if you work from the bottom up, that is starting off doing all your EQing, mixing and sound design as you go along and building up your track from there, you'll probably come across a situation where you will run out of CPU power. So in this session here, I'm just starting an arrangement. I've got a kick drum and a bass part. And on my kick drum track, the source of it is Stylus RMX. And then from there, I have it going through quite a number of processes. So when I play the kick, listen to it by itself. My bass track is already frozen. And I can see that the kick alone is using 33 to 35% of the processing. So I can already see that I'm going to run into issues down the line when I want to add further content to the arrangement. So the way around this is to right click on the track and select freeze. And now when I play this back, I can see that my CPU has gone down to 7%. So now if I want, I can unfreeze my bass track and now continue to work on this part. So on this part, I've already done quite a bit of work. I've added some MIDI effects. I've got my wave shaping synth, and then I've got a convolution reverb coming after that. So there's already quite a bit of processing on there. And as a result, when I try a playback, I've got CPU issues, like glitches and some dropouts. So again, the solution is to freeze this track. So now I have my two elements frozen, my kick drum and my bass and when I play it, all that's been used is 7%, leaving me plenty of CPU headroom to continue on with my arrangement, adding further layers of complexity. There are other uses of the freeze command other than just freezing up processing power. When you freeze a track, it creates an audio file containing the source material and all the insert effects and instruments printed, and that's what it plays back. If you want to resample the audio of these complex chains or get audio from MIDI without using the export function, you can freeze the track and drag the frozen clip onto a separate track. Then you can continue and edit and rework that file. So because both of these tracks are already frozen, if I create additional tracks, say one for each, if I drag my clip onto the other track, I'll hold down Alt when I'm doing this to leave a copy. So we have our original MIDI file. And now on this track, we actually have the audio from that file. So I can continue to rework, maybe rewarp and process this file separately. The same with the bass. If I drag this over to a separate track, and now I can see I have the audio from that MIDI part, and I can further process and edit this part and recombine it with the original. 
using the freeze command allows you to come back at a later stage and continue editing the audio or media information and refining the devices that you have on the track. If you want to finalize the operation and you've decided that all editing and processing is done, you can flatten the track. So by right clicking on the track, you can select flatten. Now when you flatten, what you'll be left with is your audio and any devices or instruments or effects that you had on your track will now have automatically disappeared. So let's undo that and get my content back. The final use I'll mention of the freeze command is when you're going to work in a different studio or work on a friend's computer. The location that you're going to might not have the instruments, effects and devices that you have on your computer. So you can freeze those particular tracks that you know are not going to be available. Go to that studio, open up your session and you won't get any error message about devices or instruments missing. You can continue working on your arrangement, recording and editing new material. And then when you go back to your own studio, you can unfreeze those tracks and continue to work with the instruments in your studio. When working with frozen tracks, you can occasionally come up against problems in terms of routing, particularly if you want to do side chaining. So on my bass part here, if I wanted to put a side chain on this, say I'll unfreeze the track and I'll put a compressor on the end. Just grab my compressor, put it on the end. And in this, I'll set up a side chain. And let's say I want to take it from the kick drum. So stylus or mix. Now it's giving me an error message in that a frozen track prohibits this routing, meaning that because the track is frozen, we can't use that as a source for side chaining. So the way around this, and let's get rid of that, is to route my bass track to another track or group it to another track. So that's what I've already done here. I've got another track set up called bass group. On this track, I put a compressor and with the source of this, rather than have it coming from directly from RMX, what I've done is that I've sent the signal from Moramex to a return track over here. I've turned the volume down on this track so we're not hearing it. And then on my sidechain track, for the source of the sidechain, I have a set to return B. So I've turned up return B on my RMX track. I've set it to a pre-fade send. So when I play back the arrangement, if I was to turn up the return, you'd see that the kick drum is there. We don't need to hear it. But you can also see if we go to my bass group, and now I'm getting the kick drum as my input. So my bass is being routed out to the group track. On the group track, I have my compressor for the side chain. On the kick drum, I have it routed to the return track. And from that routing, we get our side chain processing. So Ableton's freeze command is useful for a number of reasons, from freeing up CPU power to creative uses, such as helping you stay in the workflow without having to bounce and reincorporate audio back into your mix for resampling. There is a couple of quirks with it, as we just looked at in terms of routing, but overall it's a very useful process as you're building up an arrangement in that it allows you to better manage your CPU resources. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials.